Hi, I'm Karen from Cafe Bebe, and I'm here today to share with you some of the American Easter traditions that I experienced as a child, um, which are quite a bit different from what we do here in the UK. I thought it might be interesting for you. Um, the biggest thing that we did every single Easter was to dye eggs for Easter. My dad would take um, just normal eggs and would boil up um, probably two dozen to three dozen eggs. So you end up with your eggs being hard boiled. You don't have to blow them out. You don't have to do anything special with them other than hard boil them and preferably not crack them if you can help it in the process. So you hard boil your eggs, let them cool a bit. And then um, in America, there's a company called PAAS, P-A-A-A, no, P-A-A-S, PAAS. And they provide these little kits that you can purchase that have little food dye tablets in them, um, which have a slightly richer color than I've been able to find as a grown-up now, here in England in particular, but you can't get paws here in the UK, so you have to rely on good old food coloring. Um, so what you do next is basically set up your table. You want to put newspaper down, you want to get your surface ready, you want to have plenty of kitchen roll to dry off the eggs and um, wipe your hands because they will get dyed otherwise. So prepare your surface. Then you're going to need, depending on how many colors you have, you're going to need <clears throat> bowls that can hold a proper depth of water that will allow an egg to be submerged virtually entirely without spilling over. So get some bowls, set them up in the middle of the table. You add um, about a teaspoon of food coloring. If you want to have a really rich color, you add a little bit more. If you want to have sort of a, a, a pastel hue, you add a little bit less. Um, so you add your food coloring for each of your colors into the bowls. Then you add about two tablespoons of vinegar. Now, not malt vinegar, preferably, or else you'll be smelling like a chip shop, um, but white wine vinegar works really well because it's clear, so it doesn't uh, affect any of the, the color of the food dye. And you add in about two tablespoons of vinegar, and then add probably about three to four, um, depends on how deep you want the water to be, uh, tablespoons of water, just plain water. Give it a little stir and let it sit. Um, this will be your dyeing mixture. Then you take your eggs, and depending on if you want to get dyed fingers or have a bit of a mess, um, a spoon, and you can then put your eggs in each of the cups. Now, the critical part about the dyeing is not just putting them in the food coloring, it is putting pictures on or drawings or designs or whatever onto the eggs with wax crayon before you put it in the food coloring. It works best if you can find either a white crayon or sometimes you can find like a clear wax crayon. It doesn't have to be any brand name, but just any lightly colored um, wax crayon. And then you draw your designs on your egg. It can be anything, it can be a name, it can be a flag, it can be just wiggly lines, it could be an animal. Whatever you like to do, draw on it. Then decide what color you're gonna be putting them in, take your egg, drop it into the into the water mixture, the food dye mixture. Be a little bit careful because if you do crack the egg, <clears throat> it won't hurt it because it's hard boiled, but the dye will go through onto the egg beneath, so you will end up with a little food dye on your egg. So it just depends on if you want to eat food coloring. Um, <clears throat> and then you just let it sit. Basically, um, you know, you let it sit for a couple minutes, uh, maybe just a few seconds if you only want a light color. Again, you, you tended in the U.S. because the eggs in the U.S. were white for whatever reason. If somebody can explain that to me, I'd really appreciate it. But um, because the eggs were white, the food coloring uh, tended to show up quite vibrantly on those eggs. Um, in the U.K., obviously, most of our eggs are brown. So it does take a little bit longer for an intense color on an egg. You could do other things with it. You could paint it. You can, um, you know, just blow it out and do other designs and what have you on it, but I think that the Easter egg dyeing with the food coloring, drawing designs on it, and having them hard boiled as well um, really makes the whole process a lot more fun, and especially for kids, you can do some great designs on them, and then afterwards you have the bonus of having all those eggs, so you can have lovely egg mayonnaise, or you could have just hard boiled eggs, or you could do a salad niçoise, all sorts of things with your hard boiled eggs that will be very festive for days to come. Um, so, 
that is one of my favorite traditions in America for Easter. Um, and I hope it's something that you will try with your family. I'm going to do a little demo on how to do the design or the, um, the decorating after this little introduction. But um, I hope all of you will start to include this as a tradition in your family and know that it came from America, probably not originally, but I'm sure we stole it from somewhere else. Um, but enjoy it and uh, hope to see all of your results in follow-up vlogs yourself. Have a great Easter and we'll see you soon. Bye! Hi, I'm back for a little bit of demonstration for the egg dyeing. So what I've done is I've already hard-boiled my eggs. There they are. And then these are the other supplies you'll need. You'll need some white wine vinegar. You'll need some food coloring. Um, you can get it in any any grocery store and then you can use it afterwards for lovely baking projects as well And then you just need some water plain old tap water is fine. You certainly don't need to use anything posh um, I also have a couple of crayons here I've got um, a white crayon and a silver crayon actually I thought I'd give that a go and see how that turns out and um, Very simply what you do is you take one of your eggs and you take your crayons and then you make a design on it or a word or letters or shape or symbol and um, You just color in or do whatever you'd like to do with your eggs um, I will say and this could be fun for older children as well that um, when my stepbrothers used to do this They used to write all sorts of rude words and draw rude pictures on the Easter eggs so there were always at least one or two um, eggs that could not be shown in public. So that could be of interest to older children. Now, what we've got here are um, just three bowls. I'm not doing all of the Easter egg dyeing today, um, but just simply as a demonstration. And um, the colors I have, I have blue here, I have um, yellow, and I have red, which you can't see really because it's a black bowl. So I did well with that. I've also covered my surface um, with some kitchen roll and have some spare kitchen roll as well and a little spoon that I can use to put the egg in. Now I've got one egg in right now and it's in the red so it's um, getting a nice dye to it. Um, the mixture is simply approximately one teaspoon of vinegar. Um, you could do a half a tablespoon as well if you want to get it a little brighter uh, of vinegar and then um, you do a, the, the equal amount in food coloring and then just fill up about halfway in your bowl um, with just plain water. You don't want the liquid mixture to be too big because if you put the egg in it will then sort of rise the level of the water up and over and you'll end up with a big old mess on your table. So I've got one egg dying there. You, the longer you leave it in, the, long, uh, the, the more vibrant the color will be. Um, I've got another one here <clears throat> that I'm just going to kind of carefully put in. You do want to try to be as gentle as possible when you put your eggs in um, because if you crack them again the dye will um, seep through onto the egg below. It's not toxic but you don't necessarily want to eat a dyed Easter egg. Um, so you just simply leave them in there. Now you can be ultra creative and you can um, hold your egg and maybe just dip half of it into the mixture. Half. Ooh, creative, clever. Um, and then you can do the other half in another color. You can do maybe one color and then plop it into another color and so you get a bit of a mixture then as well. So it's it's completely creative and up to you. Oh look, that says Pepe. I wonder what else it might say on the top. Um, it's not overly dark at this moment so um, you can put it in, hold it in a bit longer. It depends on how strong your hands are. So that is very simply how the Easter egg dyeing works, a la American Easter tradition. Um, it's great fun. It's wonderful to do with the kids. Again, you'll have loads of eggs left over um, to do hard-boiled eggs or to have egg mayonnaise or anything else creative you'd like to do. You can let your kids loose on the drawings on them and supervise any foreign or nasty words that there might be. Um, and at the end, once you get your dyeing done, you simply dry it off. Oh look, dry it off. It says Bebe, top part of it. I'll we'll say cafe. And then you can put it in um, an old um, tin, if you like, or an old Easter egg carton. Um, the tricky part is generally getting it out without 
making a colossal mess, which is tricky to do one-handed. Um, oh, look at this. I wonder what this egg might say. No, it doesn't say Cafe Bebe. It says Brit. <laughs> Not too good at this. It says Brit Mums. Because I'm a proud Brit Mum video blogger. So that's the American tradition of Easter egg dyeing. I really sincerely hope that you will get to do this with your family over the weekend and have a wonderful Easter holiday. Thanks very much. Bye.